You hear all that thunder? Oh my goodness. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead, guys. Thought I would make a video for you <laughs> showing you some highlights from our Cherokee Beekeepers meeting. We have a once a month association meeting. The whole purpose of me showing you bits and pieces from time to time from Cherokee is not just to tell you how awesome Cherokee is, but also to let you know that if you are interested in becoming a beekeeper, I incredibly highly encourage you to join a beekeepers association at least visit a couple get to know a couple of people we took on being beekeepers long before we ever had bees there's a lot to learn and every time that you meet somebody new or you go somewhere new or you go to a new meeting you're learning something you're seeing something you've never seen before no matter what topic it is in terms of beekeeping, all beekeepers have their own way and opinion and whatnot. But your research, your research should start, honestly, a good year before you ever have bees on your property, in my personal opinion. You need to start in the summer, into the early fall, go to a lot of meetings, think about things, read books, um, see what they're doing throughout the year so that you know what's coming up. It's a lot of information. So, in this particular episode, we went to our Cherokee Beekeepers Association meeting and we talked about, or they talked about and taught about extracting honey. The do's, the don'ts, the whatnots, the different types of honeys, and we had the beekeeper and judge for the Tennessee Valley Fair and all of her wonderful knowledge on delicious, precious honey. So come along, see the highlights. starting to harvest their honey for uh, all the uh, old-time beekeepers uh, this might be a little bit elementary for you but hopefully you pick up a couple things or you throw something at us if we're off base and say hey hey that ain't it but uh, so when should I harvest honey what do the frames need to look like how much should I harvest and uh, if you're a new beekeeper your first year you got packages you probably shouldn't be harvesting any of your honey this year all right, so you want to leave a minimum of about 60 to 70 pounds of honey on each hive so they can get into the winter. And your frames, uh, your supers, and your supers, your deep frames, will have about eight pounds of honey per, per frame if they're filled up, and six pounds for your medium. So you're ready to harvest your frames. You want them to be at least 90%, all right? So if you look here, you got some nice capped honey frames right in here. And for uh, some of you new beekeepers, why do you want that 90% or more? You know why that is? Too much water. What's that? Too much water. Too much not. water. What happens if you get too much water? Well, your honey is going to ferment and spoil. So your honey, when your bees go and put, your, put the honey in and start capping it, it's sitting anywhere from about 16.9 to about 18.3% water. Well, that's some nice, nice, nice honey. Honey is hygroscopic, which means it likes to absorb moisture. So it's going to take moisture out of the air, and it's going to ferment if, it's, if it gets water, if it gets too humid when you're processing it. So you want that nice, nice uh, low moisture content honey. Um, we made our own because we use eight frames. Um, a four foot ladder. So you put your frames in your extractor if you put the silly thing on a table. You got to get up there, right? Or you can sit it down low and you won't need to. Don't write that down. <laughs> All, right. All right, we got, to, let's start with extracting the honey. We, and we're dealing with a food product. Keep that in mind. We're dealing with a food product. It's not any cleaner than it was when it was on the hive. 
So if it becomes contaminated or it gets dirt, grit, weeds, so forth, who put it there? We did. Air bubbles, it kills us when it comes to honey. Open a bottle of honey and uh, you see a lot of foam on top. Can you try to get that out here? <laughs> Several different kinds of, of bottles, but the most common for it. Honey show, or really for, to sell, is your eight ounce, what we call it, our clean line jars. Eight ounce, a 16 ounce, and 12 ounce uh, plastic honey jar, honey bear, and your 16 ounce uh, plastic. And then you got your old corns, you got your uh, pints, and any, anything else. This is basically this. That's your eight ounce plastic, clean line, eight ounce glass, another glass, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then it's another. The lids are, mouths are different. This is a little different. It gets us in a little trouble in judging. But jars are okay. We're going to talk about later and so forth. All right, you've got it extracted. Now you're going to put it in to your, your bottles. I got wrong, wrong, wrong. <coughs> Too much foam. Competition, that would be a no-no. Customers don't like that. They want to open it and it be real clear, clean, lids clean, looks really uh, edible. Uh, you don't want to shortchange your customer. If you're going to err, err in favor of your customer. Top left. Too full. Too full. Next one. Not enough. Third one. Too pretty good, doesn't it? And the fourth one, we're not too sure, so we're going to have to take the lid off. But you were talking about the line of this. Okay. All right, just let me hit on that. But here, don't shortchange your customer. This is a no no. You should kind of shortchange yourself on that one because all your jars are over feel like that. You got several jars, and you're going to come up a little short handed. The line, you put your, project, or your product in here, which is the honey. Polarized lens, you got one horizontal and one vertical. The nine degrees to each other. And as the light comes through and it hits particles in, in your honey, it reflects the light and it just pops. Granulation, fibers, hair, the small stuff that you, when you're holding it up, you can't see it. But when the judge puts it behind here, this could be a deciding factor. Looks good here. Mm, that's good here. Could be a piece of fiber. Don't strain through cheese cloth. I don't know why he kept talking about me, but packaging <coughs> of honey is one of the biggest things you can do. Because if you don't put it in a package, it should still be in the hive, right? A drop of water will spoil a bushel of peaches, right? <laughs> yes! A drop of water will spoil. And I thought, oh no. Those of you who know me well, when I say, oh no, there's something bad. I took my toothpick and I lifted a hair and it came from the bottom of the jar all the way to the top, just as curly as it can be. And I said, this is what you do not want to find. I will reiterate, long hair is very pretty. But if you have long hair, you have a beard, you have a mustache, cover it, comb it, be sure that you're not scratching and working in honey that day because it's to that location the next year and the next year you get home and you extract it and you put it in a jar and you put it in your mouth and you think, what did the girls do? Something else was in bloom. And I actually sat down and counted because somebody says, oh, how many colors of honey are there? <laughs> well, Mr. Jack says that there are 14 different little tabs and they each have five colors, that makes 70. But I've seen honey as white as that and it's not on there. I have seen honey as black as her shirt and Andrea's hair, and that has a brown cast. It's not black. So if you'd like to look at that, a butter or honey fork, pick up butter honey plate. Good. <laughs> <laughs> if it's thin, it's not that great. Then I would cut, but cut everything in that frame before lifting it. Because if you don't, and then you start moving it with a knife, you're going to move and scrape all the cappings off the side that's on the tray. 
What happens when you move the calvings? The honey flows out. Oh, and did you know there's a right side up for a frame of honey? The top is up because it's slanted at six degrees going this way, and if you accidentally pick it up and put it in the jar upside down, it will be like the little jar up here that was not fully uh, capped. The honey ooze. Bro, can you see light between the honey and the cap? This one's had uh, been on another jar before because this jar ring does not match the previous one. So that's why many times you are instructed to bring a new lid to put on the jar at the location. If you don't do that, at least put some saran wrap across the top of the jar. If nobody smiled and nobody cheered and nobody helped us along, if every man looked after himself and good things all went to the strong, if nobody cared just a little for you and nobody thought about me, and we all stood alone in the battle of life, what a dreary old world it would be. Life is sweet just because of friends we have made and the things that in common we share. We want to live on, not because of ourselves, but because of the people who care. It's giving and doing for somebody else. On that, all life's splendor depends. And the joy of the world, when we've summed it all up, is found in the making of friends. Unfortunately, it was written by someone who didn't give it a name. But Cherokee beekeepers are dear to me. And thank you for always being welcoming and sharing and growing. And if you brought a jar of honey and would like for us to take it. <laughs> we'll find a picture. Yeah, yeah, I know. George Robinson probably has forgotten more about beekeeping than the rest of us together. If you need to know something about beekeeping, about bees, about honey, about the rules and regulations of the game, call Miss Robinson. Or better, if the timing is just right, go to her house and she might just have a, a little food on the table for her teeth. <laughs> we want somebody that loves America to win this, don't we, Patrick? Mm -hmm. All right. John Anderson. John Anderson. Yay! Do you know this lady? I do. <laughs> I do. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Do you love America? Oh, I love uh, America. Okay. <laughs>